this video is going to be very challenging. My commentary has to be very fast and for one hour I'll be watching TikToks like usual, but very quickly, very quickly translating all the TikToks. I want to see how many I can cram in one video. Sniper Wolf is still not here this year, so uh, whoops. Just to remind you, all of these TikToks are, uh, have to be very smart to impress me. You might want to go somewhere else if you want cute animals or whatever. Anyways, let's begin. I have to pre-watch the TikTok and translate it very quickly. Car goes towards the wall. Should you turn or should you try and hit the brakes? What is the answer? See, the thing is, it's not obvious. You know, what if turning is better than using brakes sometimes? It would be nice if uh, there was a graphic because there's a lot of simulations of uh, cars right now that we have in games. See, teachers are kind of like dumb. They don't have... Use simulations for fuck's sake now. Now you're old. By the way, I don't understand anything that he's talking about because that's too much math. Half the distance it would take to turn to miss it. I guess you have to stop. And comments agree. You don't have a lot of love. Very interesting. You just stop. Congratulations. Let's move on. This is Chapman. He's woodworking. Known as Sachi Mono. Its distinguishing feature is that it uses no nails, screws, or glue. Or a minute. It seems to have higher durability. Tends to expand. As everything tends to expand exactly the same because it's made out of the same material. So, uh, very durable houses can be made out of this woodwork. Or nails. And easier to disassemble. What a bunch of Lego bricks, bro. Holy shit. You want to know? You want to know what the grand plan of the ruling elites are? Well, the truth is in this chart. I'm not exactly sure because it shows uh, certain th goods rising in price and certain goods uh, lowering in price. And my conclusion is that care, the cost of care, is increased because people don't care, you know, and they're not forced to care. The more freedom we have, the more. These things become more expensive. And this is uh, hospital services. That's, that's the one, you know. People just don't care. They don't want to deal with you. And that's just how it is. In fact, this is something that I have to talk about in my survival guide series. That people care less and less. You must not get into accidents. You must be very careful when uh, thinking about this stuff. And... Technically, having a baby is unaffordable for some fucking reason. So, and that should be fixed at some point, but for now we have to, like, stop. So far, n neither of these are actually essential, so you can't really complain too much. While the telephone and television, all that shit, people would actually say it is essential, actually. So, so. Because uh, the essential things is to have activity to... Uh, improve as a human being first and foremost that's the only thing that you actually have and cannot be taken away from you thereby keeping you the masses enslaved in perpetuity you want to go see a doctor well get on the hamster well that's not how it works just try and avoid doctors also working will probably cause you to go to doctors that's just not gonna go work very well unfortunately um and you have to play by the rules and see workarounds you want to, want to get to know doctors or uh, educate doctors, you know, force people to be doctors. It's the same thing, medical services and food and housing slightly going up. And this is a questionable thing. What's going on here? We can actually question this. We cannot question that. This is just like nonsense, you know, because people don't care and people have created Systems of not caring and exploiting each other. Anyways, I'll watch the rest to see if he makes an interesting conclusion. Truth, truth. Well, yes, there's a lot of solutions. That's the only thing that he actually said that was smart. But him mentioning free stores is kind of like a hint to socialism, meaning that we have to exchange things that we don't need for something. We have to expand our garage sales into more of a global... Uh, and more managed 
system because we have enough technology to actually achieve those things, to participate in much more meaningful tasks. And most importantly, exchange resources with each other that we might need. Care is something we can all exchange. We can all exchange advice of how to avoid doctors altogether. Side of the system, things like a free store. Ooh, ooh. Yes, uh, it's very simple to understand that you trying to throw something out. I mean, I found two pillows thrown out. I'm like, let's pick this up. This is exactly what I wanted. Exactly. It's my treasure. So uh, he is onto something, of course. The only question is, how do we develop these systems? How do we communicate with each other? Who's respectful and caring enough to do so? We should stop focusing on businesses and the government to try and help us. And we have to build social and communicative solutions to most of, the, of our problems, because that's the one that's lacking right now. Government gave us COVID and the fucking businesses gave us inflation. So we have to probably try not to give ourselves a headache on when uh, we're discussing our own inputs. What can we do? Because you are also important as a human being. You must understand that. You must input as much as you can and you must never be bored. Because that would be stupid if you're wasting your time when you could be, you know, benefiting from certain type of activity. Anyways, moving on. We do need to ban TikTok once and for all, and let me tell you why. Oh, I can tell because they don't like that we're talking to each other. They don't like that normal... Yes, I mean, uh, communism is very scary for the government. It's just a very common rule. He says common ground, unity, you know, he walks around the term of communism that nobody wants to pick up and redefine it properly. Problems have... It is somewhat true that... There's a wish for censorship because there's no resistance that way. There's no leadership. But then everything starts falling apart anyways. Because, uh, you know, everything's cyclical and you need all kinds of things. And not the negative ones most of the time. Yes, that's a weird thing how the system wants to take your votes. The government actually wants to take your votes away from you. What your vote's supposed to go to is towards finding your leaders, finding people who actually speak for you, basically, and empower those people. That's your vote. You're not supposed to even care about politics that much unless it actually matters to you somehow. Like, really. In America, politics is like the plague that spreads out and makes you, makes you ask or answer some ridiculous questions that don't really have much meaning because you don't have control over people you're electing in any way. You don't understand them very well. And you certainly don't know what's going to happen. But when you're dealing with leaders, leaders are supposed to be somewhat double-sided. Not only you can communicate with them, but they try to give you advice too, in return. Other people in your own country or in other countries on a platform that they can't monitor or control. But YouTube has been more of a consumer network, and TikTok happens to be more of a government network. Yes, you might feel free that you can talk to anyone here. That's the whole point. Anyone who has an authority to say something, they try to say something, but they cannot do leadership. They cannot actually tell you anything. They can't communicate with you. Like in the comments, if this guy was a leader, he would reply. But he can't do that. It's impossible. The only thing you can do in the government system is educate yourself. So if TikTok is a powerful system that you have, you cannot ignore. The only there's only room for education. This is why you have to watch this video to educate yourself. That's a government system, my friends. Eventually, the most government exists in schools and nowhere else because you're basically forced to be educated. Now, you can still do plenty of things, you still have plenty of freedom, but you still have to sit in the fucking classroom, and you might not like that. And TikTok brings the same exact vibe, where the only use of this is to educate yourself, is to watch compilations of uh, this important material, and hopefully we learn something new. I'm just uh, reinforcing certain beliefs, I don't... I don't know.
it's very difficult to find new things but tiktok's algorithm is working wonders and you can discover a lot of creators that's pretty nice hold on to the can yes apparently you can open the can with a spoon i didn't thought about it and uh it's uh it wins over a fork for some reason you normally would use a knife though so i'm not sure about this thing he manages to do it wow the key to preventing this breakdown is simple just spend a little more time with the people you care about unfortunately we seem to be doing the exact opposite before going into why we're doing the exact yeah this one's pretty deep and it gets a lot deeper when Veritasium gives you better help. Exact opposite. This part of the video was sponsored by BetterHelp. Yeah, fuck me. Now, I think uh, we need a better, bigger insight than I can generate on a whim. So I'll watch the whole video. Relationship. All right, exercise. And now we're getting into relationships. This really seems like material for uh, the survival series. Because talking about happiness, that's the whole point. That's the main resource, technically, that you're trying to survive with. Uh, maintain happiness, right? It literally says likelihood of survival, bro. That's crazy. Married men live 12 years longer on it. And women, 7 years longer. Mm, it hurts. But at the same time, uh, there's plenty of time, and we don't even know how much time. And we just have to go with the flow, unfortunately. <laughs> Again, so this is uh, for my survival series because uh, it literally just talks about that, living longer and stuff. Like, God damn it. Most likely. Like and how I got there is that I was human trafficked into Alabama, where I was to work into it. lost my life a few times during those months and i had a colleague of mine of a darker complexion just die in front of me i'm still not sure about what the woke thing is supposed to represent in the first place it does seem like this guy suggests and uh, after saying eastern european i'm like well we're at very least neighbors are from the same country I think Vogue as a word was given as a criticism of like, but I don't, I don't get it. It doesn't describe anything. With a bully, because that's what you are. You're just a bunch of bullies. Sensor. Yeah, the, the highlight of the speech is that you can find who's Vogue be based on asking, oh, what do you do in life? And if they just do political activism or whatever. That's bullshit. You know, like, that's not an actual activity. You probably don't even have the brain for it to be activist. Find a woke person, just ask them, what do you do? What's your purpose? What skills have you mastered? What achievements do you have? And you realize that they have nothing outside of activism, the inner, the inner hatred. hatred. See, the best they can do, because they're mostly evil and selfish, they can only look after other selfish and evil people if they're lucky to catch those. I mean, that's that's the only thing they're left to do in activism, bro. Actively looking for bigger losers than you, am I right? It's not going to be easy. Sometimes people are going to be nice enough to feed themselves into the crowd just, just to see what's up, you know? Just to expose the shit out of people like that. Woke. Woke? Now now the idea is, is this um, predatory behavior, all right? But normally when you label someone as a predator, well, they're looking for the weakest link, right? They're looking for something that they can, they can actually catch. And if they don't catch anything, they die, they disappear. There's, they, uh, their predatory days are over. They have to keep on finding things. To feed on. Move things. things. Yes, it's very easy to be hateful when you're not actually improving yourself. That is like the stupidest thing you can do and waste your time on. On attacking others when you're the weak link. <laughs> you can act as a predator, but you probably 
are just a scared little shit. Which uh, is a reminder that most people are M and Ms that don't really have an identity. What if I click? Oh, I actually missed. I guess people are forced to upload TikTok sometimes. Very interesting. What if TikTok is even cooler than I thought, bro? Three random people I clicked on, they all Die. have profiles. For good measure, still has a profile. Look at that shit, that's crazy. What TikTok has done is, is hard to believe, actually. In the end, it's very simple math, right? Like, you're trying to compare yourself to another person, and if they don't show any sort of virtues or actual activism of, like, improving themselves in moral terms, if they're not capable of lis listening, learning, and uh, giving proper, reasonable things to talk about, if they just attack you very quickly, I mean, those kind of people are not worth talking to, and, well, you can flush them down the toilets, just like that. It's just that simple, bro. That's usually how you treat predators. You don't interact with them, you don't give them your attention, they just don't deserve it, and if they attack you, defend yourself as best as you can. Angry Asian comes back! He was last time in the series uh, attacking YouTubers and how difficult their life is, apparently, uh, when they have to take a break or completely retire or something. This time we're going to talk about uh, women being very demanding. These people. I actually don't know why they're like this. And it is bare minimum that she cares about me. For most of the people. Wait, girl boss shows up again? In both comment sections? Most likely I'm gonna get in trouble. Am I wrong? I guess not. Well, some uh, women are just very selfish and they have uh, standards that nobody's gonna meet and they're gonna be alone forever. Who fucking cares, right? But there is obviously a more widespread trend of women not actually caring about you. They just don't care, they just don't know how to even, like, hold a conversation. And technically nobody knows, so I guess that's fine. But it's just like a, an eternal ping-pong table, you just, like, bounce off as much effort as you can to bounce the ball back, and you go back and forth for as long as it takes to establish something meaningful, to build something meaningful. The, we're, we're not supposed to even talk about any standards whatsoever is just like holding a conversation is the bare minimum of what makes relationships work in the first place and that shit's not happening no one even knows how to get here it's like uh, the deepest valley of all time for people because they're just too scared they don't know what to do they don't know what to listen to and they're just in the dark immediately when uh, being asked this question and like Clearly, because I would be able to actually hold a conversation of some kind with someone. And if you hold a conversation for long enough, all the fucking behavior like this, all this selfish nonsense of uh, requirements for other people, that shit goes away because you finally realize, oh shit, other people are just like me and they struggling the same fucking way, just like I do. You know, just in a different type of way. It is nice to be treated, it's nice to find your opposite side of like, if you're poor, you find someone that's rich, but it's not actually reasonable to think that way. It's better to find someone that's equal power level, that can actually, that you can actually trust. You know, that if they take things away from you, I mean, like, why would they do that? Like, they're not just gonna run away and disappear because they didn't took that much anyways in comparison to themselves. Expect more and more and more, and they'll never be satisfied with what they have. It's literally the definition of the grass is never greener on the other side. Like here is my bare minimum of what a girl should be. 
no drugs, no sex, no partying slash underage drinking, being funny, smart, and communicative. That is... That is something. Technically, I stand behind this guy who says care. And care is somewhat like mildly positive. If you can hold on to care for as long as I need you to, you know, at least to take care of the conversation. If you can't do that, I mean, well, game over. We didn't even complete it step one. You know, hold conversation for long enough until we want to meet each other, or whatever, right? Whatever it takes to like each other more and more and snowball at those feelings into something. And that one's hard. That one's a challenge for a lot of people. A lot of people want to be toxic, want to throw their shit at you. They have high expectations, as you can tell. And finding that uh, perfect little person that actually cares about you. Goddamn, bro. It takes a, the end of the world for that to happen. Yeah, one of the biggest wonders of the world, no? They say this, uh, the arrow... So if I understand correctly, he says that this side is China. And China just literally stole the wall from another country that was has built it in the first place. And because this is the side of China where they have these little openings to see and to shoot arrows through. Which is kind of fascinating, right? Stealing and lying. Typical Chinese now. But you know... You know Tartarian Empire Wall. Well, PayPal, it's very hard to believe how difficult it is to, you know, hold your accounts unhacked. But one thing is even more difficult uh, when it comes to online money is to dispute the problem that occurs uh, when you lose money in mysterious ways. How to get that money back? Well, now we're listening for a person to describe that sh process for five minutes across a multitude of days to trying to get $500. That's not supposed to fucking happen in any way. Pouring in so much effort after losing money, you're also losing time, effort, and uh, you're losing your mind, basically. And definitely you're losing trust in PayPal, saying immediately at the start of the TikTok not to use PayPal anymore. Do not ever use PayPal. Online customer service is pretty fucking cringe, I would imagine. When the system is built very poorly, there's paranoia of making mistakes. You don't know what kind of things you can actually do and everyone says different things apparently and this is just a portion of the story where um you can see a girl saying update please so even i don't know what fully happens see it in the app. bro i was like trying to call paypal for some reason i don't even remember anymore i think i just forgot a password that i needed to like get access to my fucking account and it's like unbearably impossible task for me to do and i just like fuck i guess i give i give up on the fucking 40 dollars or whatever i had in there it's just such a fucking mess online money system like what the fuck is that shit how does that not work because uh, you're supposed to hold physical cash apparently at all times and the amount of money you have to have online is the amount of money you want to spend. I don't, I don't know. How the fuck do you do that? How do you, how do you screw this system up when it's so essential to everyone? Now government does have to take uh, consideration of uh, making their own ways. Even though nobody likes government to step in, but it's just like the only choice we have. They might be better with money than uh, most of us pretend to think say because there's uh there's two choices right either let random people deal with money or the government deal with money All right? and government usually doesn't even care unless it wants to borrow something from you and they will still be nice enough to ask some often enough i'm going to be reaching out to every news station possible because they also have their own individual consumer complaints um and i'm going to be attaching like all of the comments saying the same I mean, now let's fucking go full force, am I right? 
The last person we spoke to said that work right now so i'm gonna have to wait until i get home so i can like use my ipad I'm disappointing i'm so sick of everyone lying to me just to make me go away um i think they're literally just trying to wear me down but it's not gonna happen i am not gonna let this go um yeah i'm gonna raise hell okay so messy so weird i mean how the fuck do man? I, could very, very I think this guy deserves a full minute what is going on with your train systems because when I was first coming into Europe, it was my understanding that I could very easily and affordably get on a train and just travel over to another country. That was something that was I was always told about Europe. And then I come here, I get here, and I discover just how incredibly expensive it is to get on a train and go to another country. Like, I thought that was the entire point. And so I'm talking to people, to locals who are around me, like friends, and they're saying, yeah, in recent years, it's gotten to the point that it is quite literally cheaper to fly somewhere in a country, like within the same country, in Germany, than it is to travel by train. The same thing is applying in the UK, right? The same thing is applying all over the place. What is actually going on? I don't understand it. Because we're not talking about a difference of like, you know, 10, 20, 30%, nothing like that. We're talking over double the price. As in the equivalent of you can pay for a 50 euro ticket to fly somewhere in two hours versus paying 300 euro and it taking 18. Why would you do this? What? I do can someone out there please explain it to me because I don't understand what is happening and I want trains to yeah yeah that's a big word maintenance my friends maintaining the structure of planes is a lot easier than trains weirdly enough i'm just saying bro and when people see capitalism yeah but uh you have to dig deeper just a little bit deeper because yes everyone is trying to be profitable but they can't market trains if they're not cheap enough to travel with. It's just how it works. And they, uh, maintenance, yeah, definitely. Because the whole time the fucking train is touching the tracks that need maintenance, need to be checked. If, if anything goes wrong with the train, uh, boom. <laughs> and that, it's a lot more dangerous to travel the train in that sense. It's kind of crazy. Uh, uh, people don't have enough common sense but well i was able to piece it together so that's nice so at the start you you can think it's a good question to ask but there's a obvious answer you know train is bigger than the plane a hundred fucking times thousands of times bigger than the train uh, than the plane so it's uh, it's going to take a lot more maintenance and a lot of worse things can happen for the train and they can't even travel that fast anyways as the plane does so all all things considered that's that's a very interesting insight isn't it hey doug don't you hate when people park this close to you Ugh, i hate it electric vehicles win again they can be summoned well let me show you a little trick right. if you go into the my bmw app look for remote control parking select manual hit get started we can make the car pull forward or backwards by itself so let's get it out of this tight spot I'll just tap and hold forward. Oh my god. It's an NPC. Uh, you don't know this meme? Is that a Scientology thing? No, non-player uh, character. Non-player character? What, you don't know about this? <laughs> do I get to tell you the NPC meme? Yes. This is the most important Please meme of our do. lifetime. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Okay. Breaking it down as quickly okay. as possible. <laughs> I'm gonna show my age. Okay. When you, when we were younger, we played games like Final Fantasy and Ultima, right? Mm -hmm. And in those games, you go to like the armor store or the weapon store, and you buy your sword or you buy your armor. Right. There's a guy running that store within the game. Yes. He does not exist outside of that store. Right. That character, all he does is buy armor and sell armor. He doesn't have a wife. He doesn't have a kid. You go there at midnight. He's there. You go there at 8 a.m. He's there. Right. He's the player characters you're playing. He's the non-player character. And the point this meme makes is the vast majority of humans are non-player characters. They have no pr mind outside their programming. You see this on Twitter, where it's one thing where people say cliched ideas, but they'll say cliched ideas in a cliched way. Yeah. And it's like, you have no mind. You're just repeating what has been programmed to you in your script. And as soon as you mention certain terms, there's just a knee-jerk speech that they give. And once you identify, it's like the Matrix. Like you see Agent Smith everywhere. It's very all-over-the-place explanation for NPCs. 
NPC describing I mean for fuck's sake. You can be very disrespectful that way. Explain it perfect. I mean it's good, it's not perfect though. Not everything he said is obvious to everyone. Let's start with the uh, term programming. What is that? Programming can only come not from the government, not from the government trying to turn you into N NPC. Uh, it government doesn't tell you to do shit. By the way, nothing. Government tells you nothing at all. It just suggests you things and tries to collect consent. What's actually going on is social programming. What has been described as an NPC of selling armor, being stuck in their own programming, being stuck in their own ways of existing, what has been described is the social programmed person. Because people have expectations and they want that person to be in that location all the time and you can get stuck very much. Uh, hopefully, in return, you get money. Hopefully, that's enough to do more things in your life than just act as an NPC for everyone else. Who want things from you. Who are selfish. Not, not every single NPC is an evil person. Sometimes, whoever creates or push social pressure to create an NPC, those are the evils of the world. They can uh, create NPCs, but technically they all serve a very similar structure. And sometimes you can free up an NPC, you can release them into freedom to see, to let them see a much bigger and more interesting world than they're used to, because they got stuck. So we have to be very respectful. This is not a meme to disrespect people by any means. But yes, the first and foremost, whatever this guy has described is originality. If a person just repeating the same thing that uh, you have seen many, many times, if there's no originality, that's a very NPC behavior. That's a very mindless behavior of someone just filling up space with noise that probably is not relevant or necessary whatsoever. That is usually how NPCs are nowadays used. NPCs are just there to fill the space. But the most NPCs act like that, and that's uh, the actual meme. They're space fillers. You cannot interact with them. You can't do much with them. The only thing is you can deal damage to them and they're probably going to react in violent ways back to you and that's about it. You know, so you try to not interact or do anything to them because it's pointless. Certain memes are in fact very powerful and I guess 2023 was the year of NPC and 2022 was the year of touch grass. And uh, perhaps we can mix and match these memes a little bit. Because touch grass is also very deep. And you have to be aware of not just the space that you control and all the digital things that you control, that you're able to create and master, basically. But there's the outside world that you also have to try and understand and see how it feels like, at least. While touching grass sounds like a meme because... Uh, uh, the literal meaning is kind of stupid, but that's the whole point. The same way literal meaning of non-playable character is weird and very difficult to understand. What is the meaning behind it? You have to piece the meaning together. So as you're touching grass, the deeper you go, you're going to encounter NPCs. What do we do with NPCs? Maybe the next meme will reveal the next step. It's fascinating, isn't it? We're going to a tra training altogether. The entire humanity is going through very slow but effective training of how the world works. So uh, you can't let that shit slip. Even I was kind of making that shit slip even though I was looking for the, the meme of the year and I couldn't quite find it. But that was the one. Another thing to consider is celebrities. You know, celebrities are not considered NPCs by any means. It's just the contrast of gray people, of people who have, uh, who are just complete strangers to you. Those can also appear as NPCs who 
are completely unpredictably predictable. They're just not going to do anything. You know, they're not going to make an impact in your life whatsoever. That is a very scary and weird thing. You know, everyone is going their own direction and trying to not to get into your way, which is pleasant and unpleasant at the same time. It's very ominous type of feeling where the uh, the nature of your environment is not interactive and the people are you like they're there but you don't know what to do with that information like they're there but, but they might not be even smart enough to be interactive and yes some tiktokers are trying to approach people and ask some weird questions for a few dollars and whatnot and that still is pretty cringe actually but it's it's one way the tiktok just uh breached open the npcs to test if uh, they're generally smart or they're generally like kind of dumb. I think the question is not whether we can find NPCs, is the question of how do we determine what is not an NPC? Which per which people are special? In my survival series, that's the first thing I put on and I didn't even notice that it aligns perfectly. Look for hidden talents, look for People who are not acting like NPCs, who are actually different. And see if you can pay attention to them and attract them into your life somehow. Is that possible? I'm not sure. But that would be uh, the way to go, the way to breach this meme. You can't just go outside get fresh air. You need to be active, be more active. Need to go outside more for various reasons. So the same way you have to not just detect NPCs, you have to look for something in in there, in that field of people walking around. You have to find something more meaningful than just a bunch of NPCs because that would be, you know, depressing. Anyways, moving on. But cursing in English is overrated. It's overrated, especially when you have millions of other languages you can curse in. Because, you know, in English, you'll just be like, fuck you, you piece of shit, you... You dick. That's all right, but we could do better. Like in Mandarin Chinese, I wouldn't just say fuck you. No, I would say which means fuck you and your family for not one, not two, not three, not four, not five, not six, not seven, for 18 generations. Fuck you and your family for 18 generations. Oh, Chinese don't play. Like in Romanian, you wouldn't just say fuck you in Romanian. No, it's too creative. You'd say which means fuck your mother's onions, bro. Her, even her onions aren't safe. Or in Persian, we don't just say fuck you, we say which means I hope they get dirt and fucking stuff you in there. They don't say die, they say we'll stuff you in the fucking dirt. Or in Hungarian, they don't say fuck you, they say not even a fucking normal a Buddhist one, a stinky one, bro, a fucking horse stick up your goddamn stinky. Or in Greek, I swear this one might be the best. In Greek, we don't say you suck, you Bozo, you piece of shit. No, we say which literally means fart on my balls. Fart on my balls. Fart on my balls. I mean, whatever, bro. I mean, we can borrow, but we can still say it in know, English, right? This. <laughs> we can still say it in English, bro. We can creatively stitch things together. Of course, like, but English is one of those languages that, like, oversimplified for a reason to make things faster. With the flame touching the balloon, the balloon will not burst. Water has a tremendous heat capacity. It can absorb heat energy and move it away from the latex. That is so fascinating that water beats fire even in this situation. Like, what the hell? Water and a blowtorch. Let's see what happens. Yeah, nothing happens. <laughs> I've got My a God. I've got a balloon. Anyone's retirement or anyone who's been promised in. But we go to people like my kids in their 20s when they're coming into the system and we say the rules have changed. It was you could work 40 hours for 40 years, afford a home, afford a living, have retirement and have hope. You took those incentives away from the younger generations. There, you want them to work 40 hours a week for 50 years without being able to buy a home, with living paycheck to paycheck, working 40 hours? You want them to work 40 hours in corporate America? Generations. 
again, the real problem is just the way money works. The way you don't actually generate money by generating value. If this guy generated value for me, if I'm grateful, I would give him a fucking dollar. Can I do that? Impossible. And that's the whole problem. If something good happens to you, you try to be generous to that thing and give it money. That's just how it works. If you bought a, a phone and it lasts for you way longer than expected and it's way better than expected, well, you have to give $50 to someone. We don't even talk about generosity right now. We just like fucking whatever the price is, I'll just pay that and stop thinking about it. If we don't think that way, there's no economy. There's, there's none of that shit. Socialism is what was creates economy, fluidity in the world. Otherwise, we're just being burned to death by uh, capitalism. Capitalism is not economy. Economy is about purchasing the goods and using the goods and being grateful when the goods work properly, you know, without them needing to ask us for more money and we bending over and it's like, oh, I guess I should pay for that because that's fine. You know, we have to be mindful enough to decide what deserves our money. And once we have built an actual economy, then we can complain about all the monetary things. We can't, literally can't. We just have to be helpful to each other, at least. And establish some kind of, at least, token system. Uh, until we have that, like, not, none of this shit will work. We're going to complain to the grave, my friends. Your weapon is finally here. Laser! Part of the Military of Defense's $40 million program is its ability to engage moving air and sea targets. I would imagine the, they're targeting very sensitive areas with a laser. Like, you, you can't just destroy an aircraft just like that, you know? Through targets, leading to structural failure and eventually cause them to explode. Response time. And each shot comes in at less than $13. A big difference to current missiles that cost around one million per shot. The UK's goal is to put this new technology on the next generation. Well, more military stuff invented. It's kind of weird that it's laser doors, though. Holy shit. Super fast and super cheap. And everyone would want that stuff. Uh, making missiles almost impossible. And um, does that make the world safer? And uh, nuclear weapons are also impossible. Who the fuck knows? But this is a very, very long-range weapon as well. So, I don't know. The world changes somehow because of that, it feels like. Why are all of these places hiring? Won't fucking hire someone. In a long time. Again, anytime you complain about money, I pull off the same thing. If you're not actually giving money to people who provide services to you properly, and you if you don't think of like what the service is actually worth for you, well, uh, we get into this problem where we don't we can't really easily understand what a job is, how to give jobs, how to create jobs, how to talk about jobs. We have no idea. <laughs> we just have an expectation that capitalism is going to fix everything. I would imagine government is very willing to just hand money to the people. Hand money to the people, but there has to be an economy. You can't just hoard money for yourself. You can't just, like, buy whatever you feel like that you need whenever you need it. You have to give money where it deserves to go. You know, there has to be fluidity. Like, government is not going to trust you with money. If it's just gonna stay in your fucking pockets, bro. And so we can't make jobs, we can't make anything. If we can't trust each other, just build a normal social system where we exchange goods and services properly, where we determine what is supposed to cost, like actually, instead of me asking you for money, you're the one that's supposed to like give me money to a certain extent of whatever you can afford so we don't even have the conversation but you also have to be fairly generous you know you can't just come in as a looking as a rich person and only hand me like ten dollars for like three hours of work 
You can't fucking do that, unfortunately. All right, so there's a variety of problems to deal with when it comes to money. It's very complicated, and it seems to be the debate point, you know. It is a pretty good uh, place to start, however. The job market, too. Eliminate and eradicate all the, you know, suspects, all the paid actors, all the fake shit of the listing of jobs that people see first, all the, like, ads that only try to take away money from you and all the effort and all the information from you and not actually hire you. Uh, we have to eliminate that. Probably, we can, we can work backwards. We don't have to, like, immediately snap our fingers and have a, a working economy because that's pretty fucking hard we can start by problem solving like everyone does everyone is inventing better and better systems of how to tackle all these issues that we have but we have to you know at least pay attention and worry about this shit because well other people are worrying of like how the fuck do we get a job now let alone survive with the job is difficult so uh you know like you, you don't even know what you're going to be making. Super picky of who they're trying to get for their company. People are applying to 100 jobs, 1,000 jobs. Even someone who said they applied to over 10,000. And one last thing. I have no idea what he just advised people to do. Recruiting managers? Hope that helps. You just need one response, one yes to land a job. That's true, it is a pretty sticky situation and it has to actually match, you know. Because we talked about women and jobs, we can mix and match that shit too. Because I like doing that. They both reject you for whatever reason. But the first thing I say, it's uh, exactly the same category of nonsense. Jobs, I'm not supposed to seek for a job, I'm not supposed to be desperate, I'm not supposed to do your job to find the people. I understand money is a very valuable thing, but there has to be better ways to, you know, open yourself up for hiring. The same way uh, goes with women. You have to be, well, single and be looking for a, a dude to hang out with, and your expectations should be fairly fucking low of what you're taking in, but you can always be open for a better relationship if you feel like you can handle a better relationship. But you always have to have the bare minimum by your side. And if you're single and having high expectations, then uh, prepare to be single forever or have toxic relationships in your life. You have to start with bare minimum, whatever. <laughs> And then upgrade yourself. And uh, if people haven't even offered me anything, well, guess what? Uh, nothing is happening in this world. Nothing has ever occurred in this world. No offers. All right. Like, if I'm not being offered a job, yes, like you have to actively look and you have to match, basically. Uh, we, we're both looking for each other, right? That's how it works. You can't just sit remotely in some remote area and uh, you will never be found that way. So it is a question of how can you get found? And that's another survival guide technique, I would say. And perhaps that's true. I have never uh, publicly posted that I'm looking for a girlfriend because that's actually a pretty hard thing to do. And nobody actually publicly post that I'm looking for a job. How about that? You know, it's, it's potentially a lot easier for workplaces to just call you in, just uh, ask uh, you questions if they like you or not. They, they can, they, they are the workplace, they can do the job, you just have to raise your hands and eventually you're gonna get picked automatically. That's how it's supposed to work, you know, but we don't know. <laughs> we just don't know. All right, how to do it properly. How to raise your hand across the internet properly. A uh, pretty tough spot, but uh, we'll figure it out. For me, my biggest priority is to exist as loud and Rishi loud as Zunan possible. To exist as loud and proud as possible. All right. 
And stating intentions is pretty relevant, I would imagine. E even if you put a, a single layer of sugar coating of like, oh, I'm looking for a serious relationship. No, you're looking for anything across all levels. Hopefully you're fully open or are you looking for something slightly more serious, slightly higher level. Now you have expectations because you already X'd one relationship. For every single relationship that you have X'd, you can look for something higher level. Just like for every single employee that you ha had to fire, you're looking for something that doesn't have those bad trades that you have found at certain ranges of uh, human behavior, where someone slacked and they were not able to actually level up to level two. You know. So of course you looking for something like this and only then you will gonna give a meaningful conversation. Otherwise they can expect you not to be nice to them. It's just that simple. Not to get paid uh, the very same, uh, not even minimum wage. That would be nice. Or you, you know, you just uh, intern at level one and only when you get to that level well, you get treated with an actual job. So, yeah, it's a very intric intricate system and very interesting. But, the, yeah, the main takeaway is you have to be fully open for any kinds of relationships and be able to explain this shit to other people. If you can't, we're all just going to be marinating in the confusion and not being able to connect and match our interest and see what the expectations actually are, you know, so the expectations of jobs are very high, expectations of relationships are very high, but then what the fuck do normal people do? Where are we supposed to go? The best thing to do is identify yourself. What, sh what should I allow any sort of relationship in my life? Or do I? Have I ne never been cheated? And have I never been into fights before? That is that is a questionable thing. I feel like I've already uh, completed first two steps of relationships. You know, you still have to ask yourself, maybe you are working right now. Maybe while you're looking for a job, you're already working. You're already picking up skills that nobody else has. That is just a fascinating thing to think about. Because you have to be loud and proud for anything you know, for any experience you have. So we have to double check your levels, basically, and uh, see what you're actually looking for now. Because you're also not looking for something like very high level when you only like complete two levels as well. So that also has to go to survival series. In fact, now I have to Put all the fucking clues in there that I've uh, collected, apparently. And this week after even this can be even more simplified when we're looking about talking about gaming, because you know exactly that you want better and better gaming experience that you had before that made you got bored or you completed too quickly or whatever. Like you don't want to fall into those low levels that you already experienced. You don't want the frustration. Uh, you don't want things to be repetitive by any means. These are the levels, my friends. And it's all about entertainment. It's all about happiness and all that shit. Extracting values that uh, keep up with your needs. Because your needs are supposed to kind of grow as a human being, naturally. But not too fast, so everyone else can keep up. And they are, <laughs> naturally as well, keeping up with you. As long as they're good enough. For me, my my level is like looking at other celebrities. So I don't even have to talk to anyone, bro. I have... I'm fully isolated. And that means that I'm also a celebrity in my own right in Europe. You know, I'm fully isolated. But no one is fighting each other. And no one has to like uh, be under social pressure constantly to be reminded of like what to do. Like mom, my mom is not just going to randomly leave uh, into a different location dealing with a different man and decide to disown me or whatever. It's not just, just simply not going to happen, bro. 
my mom's divorced and it's just gonna stay that way and in Europe nothing really changes meaning that you can easily establish yourself your strategy and isolation is not exactly a, a terrifying thing around here um, you can actually prove that you're a high level and you can align yourself with uh, some pretty interesting people to say the least let's uh, finish this off guys yeah, it's dragon fire again. Rishi Sunak. In this trend going around about men who can't clean ketchup off of a countertop, it's it's blowing my mind. Women will take ketchup and squeeze it onto the countertop. Do anything before we could play outside, hang out with friends, anything. We had to get our chores done. It consisted of clean your rooms, vacuum the house, uh, dust, scrub toilets, and every kid had their list of chores. And then you learn how to clean the uh, fucking ketchup. But overall, it just shows the difference between men and women and why they need each other and all that shit. It's not a not that deep for me. This guy happens to grow in a big family with a lot of children, so children have to take up chores, of course. Plastic, bro. Mate, you see this device behind me? Well, it's hard to tell what's going on. As if he died? Or the interest is so big that he would just, uh, everything would be stolen and taken away. Who knows, man? Yeah, there's the water-powered car thing. It is hard to tell why it's just, this uh, thing is not spreading like wildfire, right? Because uh, it shouldn't be impossible to explain how all of these processes work. Here you can see how poor Eastern Europeans are and how they're treated by YouTube, basically, like nobodies. Also, uh, you have to be somewhat English speaking, but like, this is a, this is a big disparity, bro. There's also like Eastern, you know, other Eastern countries. Apparently, Ukraine does not count as a European country, that's kind of weird. Or they just don't have enough data for this shit. Or get nothing. You get nothing. Zero. The only question I have, do I live in a toilet? And if anyone asks why I'm speaking English, uh, I can just show this one picture and it will explain itself fairly easily. This way you can reach international people and uh, being stuck in here like YouTube <laughs> disrespects you quite a bit. Interesting. Shit, okay. So the last one is not going to come from the same source of uh, 70 years as retirement age. It's going to be this 20p attack. Look at that shit. I did. I just gave you 10 pounds. Yes, yeah, 10 pound 20. And so, uh, the conflict has, <laughs> has began, you know, bank transfer me 20p, you know, she owes him, she's at fault. It is 1020p. This is literally what I'm talking about. The fucking people are brainwashed idiots as fog, bro. It's insane. Like, you're not supposed to create a conflict, though, out of, out of the ordinary for the fucking 20 cents, bro. You just can't fucking do that. Yeah, reverse 200 miles. <laughs> you gotta be fucking kidding me, bro. Technically, um, she explained her position very clearly. Like, uh, she had expectations. She's having this conflict. And uh, he should just let it go after, like, a, a couple of minutes of conflict. He should just fucking let it go. But he's fucking digging a hole for himself, basically. Anyone would see this footage of like, who's this fucking guy, bro? Let's fucking destroy his company, bro. Well, then you can bank transfer it to me, can't you? If I give you my details, you can send me 20p. What? Just for 20p? The actual uh, resolution to this conflict, besides fucking burning his business down, is actually charge more. The other people charge them 2p. You know, charge the other people 2p more or whatever. Whatever it takes. You know, to get your money back. If you're fucking complaining about 
feeding how about I feeding my family and I have to work and get money and all that shit like just someone else can pay for it all right don't worry about it because she clearly is getting in trouble and cannot pay those 20 magical fucking p bro that is insane bro is there not like a minimum pound are you really gonna make well, me you, you can us? include a tip on it can't you then a tip for what looking me inside your car well, what are the inconvenience you've made me you just assumed that i wasn't gonna i was gonna let you off well, you I... just make an assumption that I was going to let you off the money. But when I called the taxi company, they told me it was going to be £10, not £10.20. They say they don't give you an exact amount. Well, they should have specified that before well, they I came out with They can't specify. You don't know what the traffic's going to be like, do you? Well, then you shouldn't say it was £10 and then... They say it's an estimated. It will be around £10. That's what they say. You know what? There. I'm going to report you to your company. I'm, please do, and I'll report you to my company so we don't pick you up anymore. Well, I'm not going to come use your company ever again. That's perfectly so. fine with us. At least we get some people to pay for their pay, pay for their fares. Well, I have just paid you. you just I've paid, paid you ninety nine point nine percent of the fare. Oh, and can you not be a good human being? Christmas is coming up. You oh, not have any here we go. Of... What about Christmas for me, and my family, eh? How are you going to feed your family with twenty p? What are you going to get twenty p from you? What about twenty p from somebody else? Or yeah, that one gives me the right money, and play, and people don't tip anymore either. Oh my god. Mmm, tipping. Oh, the tipping culture, yeah. This shit. Mmm. Uh, I mean, there's a reason not to tip people like that. Holy fuck, man. You have your job. You're fucking lucky, bro. If you don't like your job, you gotta fucking quit, unfortunately, and be like the rest of the people who are looking for jobs. Obviously, I'm excluded from all narratives. Because my job is to just observe, just to be a human being, unfortunately. Well, times are tough. There's a cost of living crisis. Exactly. That's why I need the 20p. Well, that's why people don't tip you. Maybe because you're. I, people... I beg your pardon? Oh, now you're being offensive. It's, if you want to go on that level, it's up to you, but I'm not. I'm well, not I am being you. offensive because you've just locked me inside your car and I've got somewhere to go. So, so have I. I've got other customers to get. All oh, right, then get to other customers and get your money. But I, I can't just let you me pay me. See, that's the fucking mental illness right there. Like, you're getting yourself in a lot of trouble, bro. Every single fucking second that you're just wasting away. She's at fault. Well, the question is, how the fuck do we solve this problem? Because it's a 20 fucking P problem. Holy shit, man. And people are liking this post. They're creating fucking shit out of thin air, bro. This 20p can come out of other sources. Not a person who's struggling to fight and explaining their, their position that they're incapable of fucking doing that because their expectations got uh, bursted, you know. And uh, great, we're gonna teach each other not to fucking do that. I'm just losing You're my losing patience. Money. That's the only thing I'm losing. We've got pain up, pain up. You have the right, as a customer, to not pay any fucking money and still be treated nicely. Any money. Zero. And still be treated nicely. You have the right to do that. If you have a reason to withdraw money, any amount of money, or all the money, you, the customer is always right, unfortunately. And the business just has to fucking bend over and suck it up, bro. That is the that is the way of the purge, bro. Technically, I said the customer is always right. But in this case, only if you know that you are the customer, you know. Are you sure? You sure you know your rights to be treated nicely, to be treated fairly, to get the service that you want with the expectations met and if your expectations uh, are being toyed with and you're being attacked well you have the right to defend yourself and this guy gotta get kicked in the fucking face bro and his entire fucking car demolished bro his job fired bro fuck this shit bro people like that bro they don't deserve to breathe for 20p let's start a fucking combat mortal combat little bitch that, that is the way you fucking start a fight. If someone wants to start a fight for small fucking inconvenience, man, I'm a fucking ready for that shit. Because I can feel mental illness 
and stupidity just leaking off of, of that man. He's just fucking asking for a funeral while trapping a little girl for 20p. That is her service as well. You have to pay for that service of trapping a perfect fucking person for extra five minutes in a fucking ruthless environment, bro. You fucking little bitch. So that's a little meme of the purge. You also have a price as a customer, my friends. You also give a service. By entering a store, you're also giving off a service of some kind. Often enough, you just have to know what it is what your rights are, how to defend yourself, and how to fucking do the purge. Because the fucking last moment, last meme, holy shit, it kind of cracked me up, didn't it?